Welcome to LUTV Newsbreak. I am Akira Mouton. And I'm Vanessa Guerrero. Lamar University Engineering is showing what they're made of after being ranked number three on a national list ranking college graduates. This list was reported by Payscale.com and calculated by analyzing graduation rates and number of years enrolled. The online salary information company offers the return on tuition investment 20 years after graduation. The excitement around the list comes from Lamar University being ranked ahead of larger institutions such as Stanford University, Rice University, and MIT. After a year of strictly online classes and social distancing, Lamar University staff and students are excited to finally get back to more normal pre-COVID activities. LUTV News reporter Angel Hastings got to see that excitement at an on-campus event after a long time of virtual affairs. Students and staff are excited to be back outside at events like s'mores and hot dogs on campus. It feels great. I'm glad to be able to participate in them. Um, it seems to make you know a lot of the students here really happy to be coming out here and getting to enjoy these sort of amenities again. It feels good to have the events back on campus like these because I get to socialize with my friends and be around new people and meet new people and you also get free food so that's a plus about these events. Like events that kind of get students to come together, if you don't have to pay for it, you don't have to care too much. It's kind of like unwinding after like a long day of school. Although restrictions may have been lifted, certain protocols are still followed to ensure the safety of the guests. We have um, hand sanitizer, we have gloves. Um, any, anytime we're switching between the utensils, we always make sure they're cleaned off, especially um, going between hot dogs and marshmallows. So we wore gloves, we sanitized the skewers. We made an effort to make sure the area was clean. So we did a lot of the s'more making. We did everything up until them roasting it themselves. Staff members are happy and ready for things to get back to normal. All in all, it's good to see everybody back. And we did have an effect of losing people, but we're getting people slowly back again. And that's what matters, I think. Angel Hastings, LUTV News, Beaumont. A number of employers and government entities are offering cash, prizes, and other incentives to encourage people to get vaccinated. On After LUTV News, I moderated a panel with University Press and LUTV News reporters to get their thoughts on these incentives. Right, and some of these um, lotteries are just so outlandish, like California, for example, had I believe they had 10 winners where they could each win 1.5 million each. And then 30, 30 winners that could win, I think it was uh, 250,000. And then like 25 plus winners or something that could win like $25 gift cards, which is just ridiculous to give that much money to someone who could get vaccinated when you could be allocating that money for other things. Like um, for example, you could be allocating it towards advertising to kind of X out the hoaxes that people think are, you know, bad from COVID vaccines. Right, just to any kind of COVID relief, really. Like, right. uh, you do see a lot of these outlandish lotteries for millions of dollars. And, you know, you wonder, it's like, well, I, I wish I could have been in the running for that. Right. And that wasn't an option at the time. And so, yeah. like I said, I think either the, the plan should have been, we do a lottery for everyone, or we didn't do it for anyone. People, I, I, I think that these lotteries have increased the amount of people who, who have gotten vaccinated, especially if you're giving like cash incentives, like, mm -hmm. you know, the next five people who walk in get $50 or something, you know, I'm sure that has increased, increased numbers. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it would be nice for people who got vaccinated earlier to get something. Yeah, and then I read the uh, California um, thing, and it's just, like you said, there's so much that money could have been going to so much things like i know alabama instead of giving money to those who got vaccinated they gave money to tiktokers who pretty much did like pr to get vaccinated mm -hmm. and so they give they gave them like i'm not 100 percent sure of how much money they but they gave them the money they put the um tiktoks that they had made um, they were viewed by actual PR people to see how beneficial they are, and then they got money for it. Right. And so uh, Biden, President Biden made a statement saying that it might be, you know, quote unquote, unfair to those who got the vaccines earlier on. But if this helps, um, if these incentives help us boost our numbers, then, you know, that's okay with me. 
To watch the complete discussion, visit the LUTV News and Media Online channel on YouTube. LUTV is the place to get your up-to-date campus news. This is why we started our new segment where we act as your built-in bulletin board by scoping out the nest so you don't have to. LUTV News reporter Tommy Byers has more on the Big Red Bulletin. Welcome to the Big Red Bulletin, where we do the reading for you so you don't have to look all over and know what's happening on campus. I am Tommy Byers. The David J. Beck Fellowship application deadline has been extended through November 1st. This fellowship rewards two students who have outstanding academic achievements each year. The following will choose a faculty member as their project mentor. Applicants must be a full-time undergraduate student and cannot graduate before the end of the fellowship year. Students also need a cumulative GPA of 3.5 or higher and have to be in good academic and disciplinary standing. Recipients will receive a full academic scholarship. Students can also get up to $10,000 in funding for a summer project, which can include research, an internship, or international study. For more information, email academicaffairs at lamar.edu. Students are invited to attend the Office of Undergraduate Research workshop to learn how to give a successful talk or present a poster. Students can submit their poster from the workshop for the Texas STEM Conference on October 30th and Humanities, Arts, Social and Behavioral Sciences, Educational and Business Conference on November 10th. The workshop is Monday, October 11th at 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. in the Landis Auditorium in the Galloway Business Building. Registration for the Cardinal View Student Success Fair is open. Students' organizations can participate and have a chance to win up to $2,000 in cash prizes. They can host a table and be as creative as possible to win. The event is on October 30th from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. 12 p.m. in the Stetzer Center Auditorium. Lamar students are encouraged to go to an out-of-this-world public presentation given by Scott Millican. He is an astronaut instructor on the moon activities at NASA. Millican will discuss his role while working at NASA during the Apollo moon mission. The presentation is Thursday, October 21st at 5.30 p.m. in the Science Auditorium. That is it for the Big Red Bulletin. I am Tommy Byers. To learn more about what's happening at Lamar University, visit lamar.edu. Also, be sure to like LUTV News on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for more campus news. See you next time. It feels like Southeast Texas weather just does not want summer to end. It's a good thing we have LUTV weather anchor Tommy Byers to tell us if these high temperatures will fall off. Tommy? We're going to play peekaboo with our fall forecast. On Wednesday, we will see partly cloudy skies with a 38% chance of rain in the afternoon. Partly cloudy skies will continue throughout the remainder of the week where we will see highs around 89 and lows around 74 with a small chance of thunderstorms on Friday. As we move into Saturday, the sun will come back out where we will see cooler temperatures with highs reaching 76 degrees. On Sunday, partly, partly cloudy skies will return where we will see um, lows around 52 degrees. On Monday, the sun will come back out where we will see highs around 77 and lows around 55 on Tuesday. This has been Tommy Byers for your seven day forecast for LUTV weather, back to you. Thank you for watching LUTV News Break. To see more content from LUTV News, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.
Be sure to join us next time for LUTV News, where your campus, community, and culture news come together. Thank you.